Hi everybody, welcome back to the Premier Guns YouTube channel and today we've got yet another very special gun to show you. Now this is a gun that very few people will have seen because there was only ever 200 produced worldwide and we have got the stunning Beretta DT10 Anniversary Edition. So, I'll open up the case and get it out. We'll pay a bit more attention to the case later on. Standard issue Beretta pyjamas. Take the barrels out. Now the DT10, as I'm sure a lot of you will be aware, was Beretta's, well, probably first serious mass-produced competition gun. We have done a video on it, so do check it out. Uh, launched back in 2000. And what the DT10 was, it was a basically a, a machine-made ASE. Now at the time, the ASE was Beretta's hand-built competition box lock shotgun which was a step down in terms of manufacturing from the ASE um, but very very popular it won uh, gold medals in Sydney back in I've got to be careful I'll say this about 1988 I think something like that um, and 1998 even and throughout the world the ASE um, in its original format which was a silver action gun with some Olympic rings on I think it came out about 84 four, six, one of the Olympic years anyway, don't quote me on that. And then um, the ASE Gold, about 1994 I believe, um, Richard Fold famously won an Olympic medal in Sydney in the, uh, I believe the double trap with uh, an ASE Gold. And it was a fantastic, fantastic gun, but it was costing a lot of money because it was, it was, it was, it was handmade. It got bowl ramps in its steel barrels, uh, cursed and locking bolt. And what Beretta did is they looked at it and thought, this is a really, really great gun, but it's a lot of money and it's not really affordable to a lot of shooters. And the result was the birth of the DT-10. So back in 2000, the DT-10 came out and it was an instant hit because it was basically a machine made ASE. So as with all things handmade, there's always, you know, the, there's always the, the temperamental side to things like that. Whereas with a machine made gun, you don't tend to get it. And this particular model, this is the DT-10 anniversary, was built to celebrate 10 years of the DT-10. So back in 2010, uh, Bressa got their heads together and came up with uh, a gun that was not only aesthetically very pleasing and, and very, very exclusive, but also what they did is they added some new technology into the gun, which was then later seen in the DT-11. So if we start with the action, it's a bit different to a DT-10 because the DT-10 has got that sort of almost bronzy coloured action. It's, it's a very odd colour, but it's not, it's not like a brush finish like this is. So you've got a brush finish action um, with the, the standard sort of curly bits on the action that you get with a, with a DT-10. DT-10 underneath, DT-10 Trident, and of course the, the famous Bretta Trident logo made in Italy, as we all know and uh, love. And then on the trigger, our trigger group uh, on the guard, it's got this quite funky little 10 with anniversario, which means anniversary in Italian, but you didn't know that, on the trigger guard. And also it's got it on, I'll just show you that there. It's got it on, obviously on the case, and I think it is also on, yeah. So where the, the cursor bolt, where the locking bolt comes out, it's got 200, 200 anniversary there. So it's limited edition, 200 pieces. That was worldwide. So uh, from memory, we sold this gun brand new in 2010. And I'm fairly certain we had about three or four of these. And that's all we could get at the time because I would imagine that, again, with the States being the biggest market for Beretta, then there would have been a few sold domestically in Italy. Um, I think there was probably less than 20 ever came into the UK. So to, to actually have one is quite a, quite a rare thing. So, DT, as I'm sure everybody knows by now from watching the videos, stands for detachable trigger. The trigger group is removable, so you push the save to catch forward, hear the click, open the gun, and the trigger group just pops out the bottom. So, again, there's a video if you've got a DT10, DT11, not sure about how to take the trigger out um, successfully, have a look at the video. I'll, I'll run you through the, uh, the options with that. And the idea with this was, I mean, obviously the ASC had it, it was a direct copy of the ASE. So from a competition shooter's point of view, shooting all over the world, wherever you were, you had essentially a spare gun because all the mechanics of the shotgun are in the trigger group, easy to take in and put out. 
if you're in your hotel room from security point of view, you can hide it in your pants drawer, whatever you need to do. Uh, and like I say, from a maintenance point of view, should something go wrong, you could either take a spare trigger unit with you, or again, there's not a lot in there, so you could replace the parts fairly easily. Just put that back in. Now going back to the embellishments that they've used with the number 10, splashed all over it, we've also got it on the left hand side of the top lever. Nice. I mean, this will most likely be hand engraved because it's quite an intricate part of the gun. So you've got a 10 engraved in there. Also, with it being a limited edition gun, this is number 37 of 200. You've got a nice little, um, a little, nice little scroll, if you like, just going over the top of the top lever with 037 slash 200. As you would expect with an anniversary gun, they pulled all the stops out with the wood. This is, believe it or not, class three European walnut. It's an absolute stunner. Like I said, I remember selling the gun new. And it was standard Breton dimension, so it came with a 3656 stock. Since then, we've got a little bit higher. If you buy a new DT11 now, it will have 3555 in terms of the dropper comb and the dropper heel. So back when this was made, which is 12 years ago, it was a only a mil, but it was a tiny bit lower. You will notice that this gun has had an adjustable comb fitted, which is actually done by us. Uh, not factory, but you know, as we talk about fit all the time and suitability uh, for the previous owner, an absolute necessity. So we had the uh, they had the comb cut in. The very famous flared breech that you get with a DT or an ASE or obviously an SO. Uh, and like I said, the locking bolt, which comes out the side. And that just gives you such strength, such durability. They are absolutely brilliant in these guns. The DT11 now is the, apparently, I believe, the world's most successful competition gun. But in the day, everyone shot DT10s on the international circuit, particularly the skeet shooters. Although, again, back in the days of the DT10, which was 2000 to 2010, perhaps it was also very popular and there was a lot of people shooting skeet at a, at a competition level with, with MX8, etc. So, woodwork, very, very nice, uh, polished action. These little lines here, that someone's a bit of an afterthought to be honest with you, that you don't get on a standard DT10. And I talked about the fact that they, Brett implemented some new technology into this, and that was the Steelium Pro. So up until then, Brett had not made a gun with such big forcing cones, which such uh, over boring, which obviously we ultimately now have seen in the DT11. Um, so this was the very, very first gun, it was almost like a prototype, if you like, to try all the Steelium Pro barrels. Now with the added, um, the added surface area and the length of the forcing cones, it makes it a really, really smooth shooting gun and it's ballistically very, very good. Coupled with that, you've got Optima HP chokes, which now we recognise from 695, 694, 690, Silver Pigeon 3s, etc. But back then, you only got these in the SV10, which is a gun we haven't covered yet, but we will. And that was, again, another sort of experimental gun for Beretta at the time. So, Steelium Pro overboard barrels, Optima HP chokes, 10x8 standard rib, ventilated barrels, ventilated ribs. You'll notice that this one has had a little brass foresight bead in, which is not original. It would have had a white foresight bead. But again, if you've got a Beretta and you want to change the bead, dead easy they just unscrew and screw back in with a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, Schnabel forend which was standard at the time for the DT10 the only way you would have got a, um, D, uh, a beaver tail is if you'd have ordered a factory adjustable comb model. The DT10 anniversary was not available from the factory with an adjustable comb certainly not in the UK. Standard sort of laser checkering which again you now get on the DT11 so there's a lot there's a lot of attributes in this gun that we can uh, we can take from, from the 10 and put into the 11, which is what Beretta ultimately did. Uh, now this one's a 30 inch barrel. We only had, I think, two 30s and one 32 at the time we sold these guns, because like I said, that's all we could get our hands on. And it weighs eight pound five ounces. So from a sporting point of view, absolutely, you know, exactly where you'd want to be in a 30 inch barrel. The point of balance is, Pretty good to be fair, maybe a tiny bit nose heavy. And the barrel weight itself, we'll just have a look at that. I would imagine about 1470 as a guess. So we'll look at stamped on the bottom and it is actually 1470. Okay, engine turning, see this gun is in, despite it being 12 years old, but exceptional condition, all the engine turning is still intact. 
It's in very, very, very good order. And like I said, it's something that not many people will have seen. You know, if you're a even if you're a Beretta aficionado, some of these limited editions, because they're made in such small numbers, we talked about the, the SL launch edition, SL2 launch edition uh, in, a, in a previous video, and your 50 pieces worldwide. Now, 200 was probably the next level up that Beretta would produce, but a lot of their limited edition guns are like 1,500, 1,000, because you got to remember it's worldwide, and, um, you know, to produce a limited run of only 200 guns, they're not going to go very far, are they? So... Coupled with this stunning little DT10 anniversary, we've got an equally stunning presentation case. So again, you've got the, the, the DT10 Trident 10th anniversary, -o, more Italian from me on there. Nice little leather bit on the uh, on the carry handle. Very nicely presented inside with your standard Bretta pajamas. Like I said, a set of uh, Optima HP jokes. There's a couple missing out of this one. Bit of oil. And again, the DT10 always used to come with a spare parts kit, as you now get with an 11. So if you look in there, you've got spare firing pins and springs, spare trigger, screwdriver to adjust the trigger for your length of pull, and also the spare beads. Before anybody comments and says what's missing, this is the same piece of blue foam, believe it or not, that they use in the adjustable stock version. So had you got an adjustable stock DT10, you would have the adjustable stock key just nestling in there nicely. And in this little pouch, we have got a few more goodies. You've got your standard Beretta book of words. And also, a nice little touch, you've got a limited edition certificate saying congratulations on purchasing this mega gun, blah, blah, blah. We love you, Italy. Okay, that's nice. And a little um, Skeet's Vest pouch as well. And we've actually got the original warranty, which we uh, supply when we sold the gun which interestingly hasn't been registered. So, I mean, that's expired, so don't worry about that. So just pop that, those, those bits and pieces back in there. So like I say, you've got the certificate, the socks, uh, and, a, and a limited edition one-off case. So it is very, very nicely presented. One thing I will just touch on is you'll notice that this gun has got a micro-core recoil pad fitted on it. Now, this would not have been the original recoil pad. It would have been one of those uh, gummy, sticky Beretta rubber things. So obviously the previous owner of this shotgun has decided the microcore is a lot more slippy and slidey and they've decided to put it on their gun. So that is pretty much it for the DT10 anniversary. A very, very rare Beretta competition gun. Uh, very pleased to have it. Not deciding whether we're gonna stick it into our collection yet or whether we're gonna whether we're going to sell it because the chances of seeing another one are pretty slim. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If you've got any questions about any of the DT10 range, uh, please comment below. Uh, if you want any further information on this particular gun, again, please comment below, get in touch, drop us an email, give us a call, however you wish to contact us, we'll be more than happy to help you. That's the DT10 anniversary. I've been Matt Morgan. See you next time. Cheers.